Hello world, welcome back to the Almond Force channel. In this video, we'll be walking through a few of the challenges from this year's Black Hat MEA Qualification CTF. Let's get into it. So we're going to first start off by going to USB 100 from the forensics category. And the challenge prompt reads, In a shocking turn of events, a malicious actor managed to gain physical access to our victim's computer by plugging in a rogue USB device. As a result, all critical data has been pilfered from the system. You can download the files, and once you unzip everything, you'll get this sin.pcap next generation file. So let's go ahead and open that up in Wireshark. And you're gonna notice it's a lot of USB packets. And when you see USB packets, that means there's probably gonna be data transmitted. So what I did here was I sorted by the length of the packets because the larger the packet, the more data it might hold. And then I just started going through all of them. Now, if you scroll down, you're gonna notice that there's a segment here called leftover capture data. That's what we're going to be interested in. So if we select that, it's gonna highlight it in our disassembly panel over here. Now, if you also keep scrolling, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of JFIFs here, which means that there's a lot of JPEGs because JFIF is a header for JPEGs. And you can also tell by the beginning few bytes here, FFD8 is the file signature for a JPEG. Now, this isn't very relevant to the challenge. This is just kind of clutter because what we're really looking for is if we keep scrolling down, Right here, you're gonna notice that there's an executable here as denoted by the MZ file signature. That's the file signature for a personal executable. And then you can also tell this is kind of a Windows executable by reading this prompt here, which shows up in most personal executable files or Windows executable files. So we're gonna grab that data by simply doing right click on the leftover capture data, export packet bytes, and we're just going to export the raw data here and we'll call it flag.exe. Now it is possible this could be a DLL file or some other kind of Windows executable related file, but for this challenge, it is an executable file. Now we can even verify that by going to our Kali VM and we're just gonna drag and drop our flag.exe file into Kali here. And then we're gonna run file on it And as you can see here, it is most definitely a personal executable 32 plus file, which means that it's a 64 bit file. If you see the plus, that means it's 64 bit. Before we run it, we're gonna see what it actually looks like on the inside and see if the flag isn't just in plain text. We're gonna open it in cutter. You can also run strings on it too, but that won't really garner you any kind of insights into what it's doing in this case anyways. So we're just gonna go ahead and skip that step. All right, now that that's open, we can scroll down and we can see that there's a main function here. And you're gonna notice that there's this string of random text here. Now, that looks to me like an encrypted string or a, a string that could potentially be decoded to provide us with a plain text, potentially with a flag. And if you look down here, it's easy to kind of see that the RAX register is being manipulated. So this string is being manipulated in these ASM calls right here. That's fine and dandy and all, and we could definitely take that string and kind of write up something to kind of reverse it. But I found this to be much easier and that all you really need to do, which is not recommended in the case that it's a piece of malware or whatever, but we're just trying to get the flag. So it doesn't matter in this case, we're going to go into our challenge directory and actually just run that file. And that will give us our flag, which is a bunch of hexadecimal characters. So we're gonna copy that and we're gonna go back to the challenge page and submit. Oh, we have to submit it without the flag format. That's right. There we go. All right. Now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to the next challenge, which will be the next forensics challenge. And that is not supported. The prompt reads, straightforward challenge. The flag is written on running notepad process. Okay, so for this one, you're gonna download the challenge files and you're gonna end up with a mem dump. This URL.txt is from the first zip file 
And that's just gonna give you the link to the actual zip file that's gonna have the challenge memory dump in it. And it kind of gives you a hint to what kind of memory dump it is because it says Windows 11, which means volatility 2.6 will not work for this as it maxes out at Windows 10. So we need to use volatility 3. Now you can use Linux or Windows for this. I know that some people were having trouble with Linux and it was throwing errors. So if you can launch it in Windows, I would recommend it. Now we're just gonna go to that challenge directory in our terminal here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna first spit out the processes, right? The challenge prompt told us what process we need to look at. So that kind of streamlines our efforts here. We don't need to run image info on it either because it automatically detect it when we start running volatility. So we're going to run vol tac q for quiet because we don't want all that output as it slows down the process. We're going to do tac f and then pass in our memory dump. And then we're going to do windows.pslist.pslist like so. And that'll give us a list of running processes. Now we're just going to wait for that to finish executing. Okay, now with that done, we can see that our notepad process is right here. And if we look at the headers at the top, we're interested in the PID, not the PPID, because that's the parent process ID. That won't give us what we want. We just want the process ID. And if we look down here, our process ID for notepad is 6028. So now what we want to do is actually dump that process memory out. And the way to do that is we're going to run vol, tech q, tech f, like we did before. And then this time we're going to specify an output directory of the current directory with a dot. And then we're going to use the windows.minmap.minmap module. And then we're going to specify the process ID, which is 6028. And then we're going to tell it to dump that process's memory. Now when we run that, we'll just sit here and wait for that again. Now for some reason, quiet doesn't actually quiet this thing from running for some reason. So I will just skip to the point in the video where this actually finishes doing its thing. Now that that's finished executing, let's go ahead and clear our screen a little bit here. We can see we have this new PID.6028.dmp file. So what we want to do now is we want to rename the extension to .data because we're going to actually process it in GIMP. Because the whole point of this is to visualize what was going on during that point in the memory when that notepad process was running. And GIMP has a way of processing raw data from a memory dump. So we can actually see what was on the screen at the time Notepad was running. But in order to do that, we have to rename the extension to .data or some other extension that will allow GIMP to process it as raw data. So now we're gonna launch GIMP. And then we're going to just open that file. Now here's where things get interesting. I'm going to go ahead and expand this window out a little bit so we can see it better. You're going to want to choose a resolution for the image that's kind of standard, right? You know, 1080p, 720p, something like that. One of those will work eventually. The one that ended up working for me was 1920 by 1080 like so. And then you're just going to drag this offset until you start seeing plain text like so. As you can see, our plain text ends up right here and we can see our full flag. Obviously, I can't read it again because it's all in hexadecimal, but we're going to copy this out and submit it. I'll jump to the part of the video where I actually have this finished copying out. Okay, I believe I've copied that out successfully now. So let's see if I actually got it right. We just want the portion of the flag that isn't surrounded in the flag format for this one. So we'll copy that, paste it in and submit. All right, let's move on to the final challenge that I solved for this CTF. Sorry, I couldn't solve more. I just didn't have the time, but that's okay. So let's go and do Get rid of that. Okay, let's go and finish this off with the what am I reversing challenge. Can you figure out what type of file this is? Okay, so if you download the files, you will get this what am I.dll. 
Now, this is a DLL file, but I think it might be somewhat corrupted because if you tried to pop it into any kind of like online tool to kind of read it, I think some will work, but not in the way you think it will, right? You're not trying to load the DLL here because remember a DLL assists actual executable files because they're what executable files reference when they're running as they're dynamically linked libraries. So what we're gonna do actually, and I don't know how many of you know this, but we can actually open it as an archive. And then we can go into dot resource and then bitmap. And if we open up this bitmap, we'll get our flag. Cool resource finding. Pretty nifty little trick there, huh? So let's go ahead and enter our flag in. And there we go. All right, that wraps it up for this CTF as far as what I was able to accomplish in the short time that I was able to. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comment section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.